All right, y'all. Welcome back, and thank y'all for being valued members of this channel. We're going to be going through the first quarter of the orange and white game today. I'll talk a little bit of formational stuff, but mostly I want to try to hone in on individual players, uh, you know, especially in regards to what we're going to be doing in that transfer portal. But our offense spreads you out. We all know that. And what that means is you're going to see lighter boxes. So we've got a six-man box for our defense right now. And this is why our team is able to run the football at such a high clip versus pretty much anyone, just because you have to be able to match up on the outside. And that just leaves the middle of the field very, very open for us. That's also why we think that we're going to have a really big season because Nico is really good operating in between those hashes, in between those numbers. So let's let this thing continue to roll. And what we're seeing here is man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. Up top, that's John Slaughter. He's playing more of a free safety look, so he's playing in the middle of the field. Anything that comes deep, he's going to help out with that. And let's let it roll a little bit more. Now, what we have right here is Mouse gets him and going in motion. We're seeing that the safeties are switching. Now, John Slaughter is man-to-man -man on Mouse Kitzelman. And we've got Kobe Thomas is now at the free safety look, so he's patrolling the middle of the field. All right, let's let her go now. At this point, what we're seeing is a stunt. So on the inside right here, okay, this is Bryson Eason, okay? And what he's going to do is he's going to occupy this, uh, this B gap, okay? So he's going to occupy that so that there's a lane for Dominic Bailey, who's, who's on the outside right here playing strong side defensive end. He's going to come in here, and we can see that uh, I believe that this is Caleb Perry is going to come around the end on a blitz so we're pretty much just overloading the right side of this offensive line and we know that dane davis is starting right now at right guard and john campbell is at right tackle he is going to be the starter but dane davis will not be starting at right guard for us this is something i had kind of talked about you can tell right and i know that this is focusing on the routes but you can still tell if you're looking up here at the line of scrimmage that there's already some pressure in nico's face somebody missed something and pressure coming from the inside is a big time no no that right there is got to be on dane davis now as far as the routes go nico was looking at first okay this x right here he was looking for this quick screen but that's covered up that's great coverage and we've got mouse kitzelman running down the sideline on a wheel route he's also covered up so the only place that nico could throw the ball to and he can't even get to that read because it's his third read is right here on this post and i can't tell who that is it might be Chaz or it might be caleb webb but anyway, that right there could be open. Again, back to the middle of the field is going to be very important for this offense. But the offensive line is also going to be number one. It's going to be key. If we could have just gave Nico a little bit more time, then that is a first down. But it ends up being a sack instead. All right, so second down and 10. And what we have right here is another lighter box. But this one, well, yeah, this is still, this is a six-man box, right? So on the outside right here, this is james pierce and uh he's in a stand-up technique but let's let this stand roll this is going to end up being a running play so number one right we see that everyone is uh you know getting onto their blocks we're going to have a couple of guys kind of start off you know double team here and then get up to the second level and uh right here this is john campbell he's coming around uh he's pulling and he's going to pretty much get the first person that comes through the line or he's going to come all the way around and try to get a good seal block on the edge and the running back is Deshaun Bishop, and he does a really good job just of kind of, you know, getting behind his pads. I think that this is really nice, okay? It's only four to five yards, but this is critical. We've got to be able to generate plays like this on a consistent basis to be a championship caliber team. All right, and right here, what we have is straight man-to-man -man on third and 14. You can see we've got six people inside of the box, and what we're seeing right here is double A gap blitzes. So as this thing continues to roll, we'll see that Nico is going to check with the sideline and he's going to kind of switch that protection like we just talked about. This is man-to-man -man coverage. And up top, I believe that's Kobe Thomas playing that free safety look that we talked about. And you can't see it down at the bottom, but somebody, I want to say it might be Ricky Gibson is also in man-to-man -man coverage. He's on an island by himself. So as this thing continues to roll, all right, so you can see that Nico's looking to the sideline and saying, hey, we got to switch some things up. So we're getting it switched. Okay, we're getting it figured out. Now we've got Deshaun Bishop stepping up so he could take on these blockers if they do come, but they don't. So they end up just kind of backing out and they're playing an underneath coverage right in the middle of that field just to kind of, you know, protect that. Again, it's third, and, it's third and 14. So we want to make the throws as difficult as possible on the offense. So I love to see this. And again, guys, a lot of the stuff that we're doing, especially on defense is going to be very, very basic. So that's why we're seeing so much man-to-man -man coverage right here. But we see that, look, really nice protection. So Nico has the time. If you give him time, he's going to find somebody. 
and he's able to throw it right here to the outside. And uh, that is Caleb Webb, and that was Jermaine McCoy in coverage. That all looked really good, okay? Now, that was not a first down. Obviously, I think it was only maybe a you know, seven or eight-yard gain. But if we could have done that on first down or second down, then we would have been in a much better position. All right, so right here, we are in cover three. That's just showing what the safety uh, and the two cornerbacks are doing. We kind of talked about that before. And let's let it continue to roll. We'll talk about what the underneath players are doing. Obviously, you know, we've got the other safeties coming down, curl to flats. This linebacker up here is moving to the middle of the field as the orbit motion is coming over. And I believe that this is Dayton Sneed that's coming on their orbit motion. And we're going to have, I'm not quite sure who this is, but it might be James Pierce. It's probably not, though. But he's going to end up dropping into that curl to flat on the other side of the defense. Now, what we're going to have right here is on the outside, okay? This linebacker is coming on a blitz, and I believe that this might be Boo Carter, okay, coming off of the edge right here from the star position. And this is why you can tell that these games are so manufactured because what we have at this point is a blitz that's coming, uh, you know, from one side, and we're throwing right to that side, okay? This is, again, this is manufactured. Just saying, hey, can we pick it up, and can we, uh, you know, connect on this pass? Now, we've got Luke Schaus, who is right here, He's going to be blocking. I believe that's Andre Turrentine, and I can't really tell who this is, but he's also going to get a really good block, and Dayton Sneed should have a whole lot of room to kind of run, and I think that Gaston Moore does a good job of getting that ball off. Okay, he might have been sad that this was actually a live game, but I think that that's a pretty nice play, and it was pretty well executed uh, by our second-string offense. And on this play, the players that are highlighted in white is the secondary players. We're playing cover two here, and the players in red – are our linebackers just kind of showing you what the coverage looks like. But if you pay attention down here at the left with the red and white circle, that right there is Shandavian Bradley. And he's going up against Larry Johnson, the third at right tackle. And Larry Johnson was a Juco transfer this past season. I think that he looked pretty good in this orange and white game, but watch what Shandavian does to him. Boom, beats him with speed. And I think that that could have ended up being a sack. So I think that was a really good job too by the quarterback just dumping that ball off and getting it out of his hands before he got sacked. But a lot of that did come from Shandavian Bradley's press. So on this play, it's going to be a quick little throw out to the left flat area, but pay attention to this man right here, Emmanuel Okoye. Watch this burst off the ball. Now he's unblocked, but that right there looks like an NFL player. That's scary how quick he is. Look at that. Boom. That's insane. He's going to be very special, okay? I'm very much looking forward to seeing how he's going to continue to get better throughout this season. But let's see it one more time because, I mean, this type of burst for a guy that's six foot six, six foot seven is insane. He actually, you know, once he gets a little bit more acclimated to playing football, he might have been able to make this play. I mean, he might have just caught this ball and been able to take it to the house. So extremely versatile athlete, and I'm so happy that he's back on the defensive side of the ball. All right, so it's first and 10. And uh, we got the running back going over in motion. I believe that's Patrick Wilk. Now, again, we're paying attention to Emmanuel Okoye. Let's see him go to work. Looks like we are in man-to-man -man coverage everywhere else. So watch Emmanuel Okoye go to work on this left tackle. I think that that might be Gage Ginther, but look the way he's pushing him around. Again, he doesn't really know what he's doing, but let's talk about the coverage here, okay? So playing man-to-man -man coverage and this, you know, uh, going up against this offense, little things like this can happen. That's why it can get kind of tricky. So we see right here, um, that I can't tell who that is, but they're kind of, you know, in the way of, I believe this is Christian Harrison from being able to guard this man because he's coming over here to guard that guy right there, Patrick Wilk, out of the backfield. So that could be a part of the reason that um, this slant was wide open. And this is a tight end right here. And I want to say that that is Browder, number 88. Okay, so that was a pretty good catch by him. So on to the next play. Let's pay attention to what uh, to what William Satterwhite does on this one, okay? So he's playing actually at left guard right here, but he's going to pull around. I want you to watch what I was just kind of talking about with him being willing, right? So, okay, so that was a nice pop, but you see that he kind of gets pushed back some. And I can't really tell who that D end is, but this is what I meant by these guys are willing participants to get in on the physicality of the game. They just got to grow. They just got to gain some more weight, get a little bit stronger. So at some point, those are going to end up being kill shots for a guy like William Satterwhite. So that point maybe could come by the end of the season, but more than likely it won't happen until next year. And we can kind of echo those same sentiments for the entire offensive line. We kind of saw that happen a lot. But if you look at everyone else, I mean, this is pretty much all freshmen out here. Uh, maybe Aiden Bustle's out there with those guys, but that's a pretty good push. I mean, that's not bad at all. It's a lot better than what it was for us 
or, you know, for our true freshman last season. And on this play, we're going to have Edwin Spillman coming around on the edge. He's going to come clean. He times this up beautifully, too. And this is a sack. Boom. Okay. So that's Patrick Wilk that was trying to block him at running back. This is one of the things that does concern me about our running back room. But I would say that for the most part, we look good in pass protection. Um, you know, that was a tough block, especially just because Edwin's speed is crazy. That's something that I think really jumped off the film to me, uh, just in watching him so far throughout all of spring, is that he's a lot faster than I thought he was going to be. So, I mean, he's just an absolute total man child out there. Uh, he's, he's very impressive. Again, he's going to play a lot for us this season. All right, so this is the play that Jake Merklinger almost hit on this seam or bender route. We're in cover two, so the cornerback is occupied in this area, and the star player is playing like in the curl. And I can't tell who this is, but I want to say it might be John Slaughter. It could also be Kobe Thomas is um, playing over the top right here. Okay, actually, you know what? I know this is John Slaughter, but he's playing in his deep half. So let's go ahead and let this thing roll. Okay. So what we're going to see, number one, look at how clean that pocket is. And we'll see it again from a different angle. But I mean, this is a perfect route for a coverage like this. And I think that it was great timing, great anticipation by Jake Merklinger, especially, you know, for a, for a true freshman. But the ball is just, I mean, it's, it's a game of inches. The, the ball is just barely out of the reach of this wide receiver right here. Um, and that is Jackson Locke. So we'll see it again from the end zone angle. It's a little bit better to tell. Okay, so right here, boom. Look at that pocket. That is beautiful. And that's a whole bunch of underclassmen up there. So you have to love the way that this team is trending. That's probably who they're going to be blocking for in 2026. So it's good that they're kind of, you know, figuring things out together right now. Beautiful work. Okay. If you give Jake Merklinger time, he's going to make you pay, especially as he continues to progress in our offense, as he continues to get better, he's going to hit these. And if he does hit this, Jackson Locke is going to hit his head on the goalpost. That would have been six all day long. See it again. From the other end zone angle and again you can tell how beautiful that pocket is just a little bit too far but if jake puts just a little bit more air up under this and uh and lets jackson lock run up under it that's going to be six all day long all right now d-line versus o-line right here up top okay we've got caleb herring and he's going up against i believe that's lance hurd and the second person that circled right here, this is Big O, and he's going up against Bison Lang at center. So I think this is a pretty good job pretty much by all parties. Now, what you're seeing, I mean, look at this, Big O collapsing this pocket from the inside. That is huge. And also, you know, Bison Lang is kind of holding his own. It's not absolutely awful. Yeah, he is getting pushed back, but Big O is a whole lot of man, and I mean, he's going to be doing this to a lot of people this season. I just think that the burst and the pop and all that with this entire team is completely different this season. But, um, I mean, you see, boom, okay. Also, let's let's go back because I want to also take a good look at Caleb Herring's rep versus right here, boom. Okay, look at that. Okay, so this is a really good job, right? So he gets up the field on Lance Hurd, and he's going to come back to the inside. So this is something that Lance Hurd is going to have to get better at. But it's very encouraging to see a young player like Caleb Herring doing this. So, boom comes through now the one thing that he's got to do is control his emotions dude like you're about to go tackle nico below his knees you know what i'm saying like what are you thinking doing that but you have to love that effort okay you have to love the way that that defensive line and the offensive line is looking again we all know that cooper mace is going to be starting at center but i feel a lot better uh now with um vice and lang being in there as well just because you're seeing reps like this okay again it's not perfect but it's also not absolutely terrible and, you know, he does escort Big O out of the way. I also think the Big O kind of, you know, slowed down because he didn't want to hit Nico. He understands this. He's been doing it for a very long time. But let's go on to the next play. All right, so pay attention to the stalemate at the line of scrimmage. I love seeing this. We talked a lot about it. Again, you're just seeing that strain, that back and forth effort between offense and defense. And also, look at the linebackers right here in red. All of their steps are going to be forward towards that line of scrimmage. This is what I'm saying, y'all. The defense, and then look at this. I mean, look at the man-to-man -man coverage. It's tight coverage everywhere. This is what I envision for this defense. A whole lot of pressure, a whole lot of great athletes, and we can lock you down on the back end. And here, okay, we're just playing center field right here. Okay, this is just an extra man. Uh, but this does end up being a running play. All of the gaps are filled up. But watch this, okay? Deshaun Bishop fighting through tackles, falling forward. You've got to love what we're going to be looking like. Coming up here in the fall, this team looks really, really good. This is what you get from these spring games. You know, everyone's talking about you can't really get nothing from it, but this is what you get, right? You get that effort. You can see how 
Uh, you know, the fundamentals and things like that has changed so much. But let's see it one more time. I mean, really nice job, too, uh, by Lance Hurd kind of getting up to the second level. And then I'm not quite sure who this linebacker is, but that's a really good job of fighting around it. You know what I mean? Just beautiful. That's probably my favorite rep of the entire orange and white game. All right, and on this one, we're going to be watching Shamrod Umarov. He's the one that's circled right there playing left guard. Watch, watch him go to work. Watch what he does here. Okay, look, first guy, boom. Second guy, boom, passes him off beautifully. Doesn't give up too much ground doing it either. I mean, that's what you want to see. That's why I said, hey, I'm very impressed and I feel very comfortable with Sham starting at the left guard position. I think that he's going to end up winning it. Now, we can also talk about what's going on out here, okay? Um, first off, Nico does a really good job with a good pocket, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. And he's throwing it to Chris Brazel, and we've got Ricky Gibson guarding him. So this is a really good job by Ricky Gibson just getting up the field quickly and making a great open field tackle. You also like what you see out of a guy like Caleb Perry on this play. And I think that we'll see it from the, from the different angle. But, I mean, that's a good job just straining. He's kind of getting held. You know, you like to see that too. Um, all right, so here we go. Seeing it from this angle, first off, boom. Watch the way that Ricky Gibson gets out of this wreck and how much ground he's able to cover. I think that that is beautiful. This is why he's special. Great job, okay, outside in. And then we've also got, again, Caleb Perry right here doing what he's supposed to do. And this is holding stays that's trying to block him. He's got to kind of, you know, work on that. Got to do a little bit better because that's definitely holding. Once he goes past you like that, you've got to let him go. But I think all in all, this was a really solid rep. I mean, this just looks good. You're seeing that strain. Jeremiah T. Land is right there to clean it up. All right, now, as we're seeing it from this side, okay, beautiful job by this offensive line. Again, they're very young. That's Gaston Moore out there. Everyone from center to left tackle are all true freshmen, right? So the center is William Satterwhite, and the left guard uh, is Max Anderson, and the left tackle is Jesse Perry. Now, at right guard, we've got Aiden Bustle, and then at right tackle, we've got Larry Johnson. So, again, let's pay attention to how the blocking looks. Boom, okay, Khalifa Kiefer highlighting him. Really good job right here picking up this blitz. Great job. I mean, you know, I, I love the way that he was able to kind of go out and meet the man further away from the quarterback to keep that pocket nice and clean. Okay, I'm not going to wait for you to come to me. I'm going to go meet you. Boom. Really nice job, and that's why we were able to complete that pass.